A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens Narrator number one It was Christmas Eve in London. Scrooge was counting his money. Bob Cratchit, the clerk, was writing in the cash book. Bob, it's cold here, Mr. Scrooge. Can we turn on the heater? Scrooge, no, burning wood is a waste of money. Put on a coat. Narrator number two. Suddenly, there was a bang on the door. Bob opened the door and Fred, Mr. Scrooge's nephew, walked in. Fred, Mr. Scrooge's nephew. Merry Christmas, Uncle. Scrooge. Christmas? Bah! Humbug! Christmas is a lie to make you spend money on turkey and cake and gifts. Fred, Scrooge's nephew, come on, Uncle, we want to invite you for Christmas dinner this year. Scrooge, bah, humbug, I do not like Christmas dinner. Bob, oh, I spend Christmas at home with my wife and children. My son is very sick. It could be his last Christmas. Fred, Scrooge's nephew, that is terrible news, Mr. Bob. Uncle, listen. Christmas is a good time to be with family. Scrooge, no, Fred, go celebrate Christmas your own way, and please let me be. Fred, Scrooge's nephew, as you wish, Uncle, and Bob, have a Merry Christmas. And all the best to your wife and son. Bob, I wish the same to you, Fred, and a happy new year. Narrator number three. Fred, Scrooge's nephew, left the office. Narrator number four. Suddenly, there was another bang on the door. Scrooge walked to the door, grumbling. He opened the door and saw two Salvation Army officers. Salvation Army Officer Number One. Hello, Mr. Scrooge. Would you like to make a donation to the poor? Scrooge. A donation to the poor? Are you kidding me? Salvation Army Officer Number Two. We are not kidding you, Mr. Scrooge. The poor need your help. It's winter, it's cold, and the poor live on the street. Scrooge. Well, put him in prison. That will keep them off the street. Salvation Army Officer Number One. In prison? But they did do nothing wrong. Salvation Army Officer Number Two. Thank you for your time, Mr. Scrooge. Have a Merry Christmas. Narrator Number Five. Scrooge closed the door with his usual bah humbug. Meanwhile, Bob stood up and closed the only button left on his coat. Bob, sir, I have finished my paperwork. It's time to go home, Mr. Scrooge. Narrator number six. Bob went home. Scrooge returned to his desk to finish his accounts. Suddenly, he heard a strange noise. Mr. Marley's ghost. <coughs> Scrooge. Scrooge. Who's making that noise? Who's calling me? Is that you, Marley? But you're dead. I must be dreaming. Marley's ghost. No, Scrooge, you're not dreaming. I'm here to tell you something. Do you see these chains? I'm chained to my sins. Scrooge. To your sins? What sins? You were a hard worker and a good businessman. Marley's ghost. Businessman? No, I took and took and I never gave anything. Hear me, Scrooge, I'm here to warn you. You still have the opportunity to change. Scrooge. Change? How can I change? Nobody needs my love or support. Marley's ghost. 
Nobody? Are you sure? Here, take my glasses and see for yourself. Narrator number seven. Marley's ghost took off his glasses and gave them to Scrooge. Suddenly, Scrooge could see Bob's house. Margaret, Bob's wife. Tiny Tim is so sick we will soon need more pills. Bob. I do not know how to pay for them, Margaret. Margaret, Bob's wife. But Tiny Tim could die without his pills. Bob. It's Christmas today. Let's enjoy this day and worry tomorrow. Scrooge to Marley. That is terrible. How can they be happy? Marley's ghost. They try, Scrooge. They try to forget their problems for just one day. Scrooge. But Tiny Tim will die without his pills? Marley's ghost. Bob will return to work tomorrow. Is there anything you can do, Scrooge? Do you give him a decent salary? Narrator number eight. Before Scrooge could answer that question, Marley's glasses showed Scrooge another house and another Christmas party. Fred, Scrooge's nephew. Ha ha ha! Scrooge. I knew that voice. It's my nephew. Fred, Scrooge's nephew. Ha ha ha! Uncle Scrooge didn't come to eat with us because he's too busy counting his money. Fanny, nephew's wife. He must be very rich. Fred, Scrooge's nephew. Rich, yes, but does his money make him happy? He doesn't do anything with it. He does not even turn on the heater. Fanny, nephew's wife. Really? He lives in a cold office? That is sad. Scrooge. They pity me. I can't believe it. I'm so rich. They are so poor and they pity me. Marley's ghost. Yes, Scrooge, they feel sorry for you. Scrooge. Here, take your glasses, Marley, and thank you. Thank you for helping me. Narrator number nine. Marley put his glasses back on and lost his chains. Scrooge gave money to everybody who needed it. He bought gifts for his nephew and finally he rushed to Bob's house. Scrooge, Bob, you've worked long hours for me. You never complained. I will raise your salary and I will pay all the doctor's bills for Tiny Tim. Bob and Margaret, oh, that's wonderful. Thank you ever so much, Mr. Scrooge. You're so generous to us. Scrooge, Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. <laughs>